anyways, just to let people know, uh, I usually don't stream in the mornings, not on Twitch at least. But because of the coronavirus, unfortunately, I mean, that's, that's becoming a tired old excuse already, but... Um, my time is better suited taking care of my family and making sure I reach out to friends and uh, I have additional like tasks, you know, just to do during the day that I can't really do at night. So I've been particularly tired at night and sleeping kind of a more like regular schedule. So, but I don't want to not stream. So I'm just going to switch to mornings uh, while Ariel's at work. I will do the same five days a week that I normally do, uh, but it'll be probably about 6 15 a.m to uh 10 15 a.m and then some days i might do little shorts on youtube right afterwards uh we'll see how it goes oh you're good i just saw it when i hopped back into the chat so i banned him i just hate that plus it can cause some issues for your channel which i don't want right away as soon as we went live there's a bot in our chat asking to buy followers which is bullshit um anyways this is kind of a special day and a special stream so uh jacob my moderator knows and of course my wife knows but i used to work as a uh, freelance journalist in my mid-20s for quite a few years i pretty much just covered comic books and books um i did a few games like indie games for playstation through an outlet called game skinny I didn't do very many, though, to be honest. It, I was mostly a comic book journalist. That was kind of my bread and butter. But it's always something I really wanted to do. Um, and I never really wanted to work for, like, any of the big outlets. Um, that wasn't a goal of mine, and it wasn't when I was younger either. But now that I have my own company, I can do video game reviews. Because um, we have our own website. We have a Twitch and YouTube channel. And then we have uh, three ongoing podcasts. So now I get to review games how I want and do content for them. Um, and so this is AS Inquisitor's first review of a game. Um, and it's special in the sense that we actually got a review copy of it. And the embargo lifted today at 6 a.m. Uh, the game doesn't come out till tomorrow. Uh, I've already written my review, the podcast has been recorded, and I'll be sharing those links after the stream. Um, but we're going to stream some of it. So you can buy this game also for uh, $9.99 or $10 uh, tomorrow. So it, it releases 20 Yeah! 501 subscribers for Inchaka's World. Congratulations, buddy. Oh, I've been up like crazy. I've been staying up like later. I like I'm up really early and then I stay up late. Late for most people. Not as late as we normally stay up. And then I sleep and do it all again for just a little bit, but Woohoo! Five oh one subscribers. Congratulations. You hit that quick. You went from low four hundreds to five hundred like like Speedy Gonzalez. But anyways, let's dive into it. this a little bit um to provide context um colin moriarty the the point man on twin breaker um uh, is a podcast host he used to work for ign and then he left and had a startup company with uh an old friend of his kind of funny games and then he left that and now he has his own company called Colin's Last Stand, and he's a podcast host. He, he writes podcasts, he produces podcasts, uh, and he co-hosts. Um, he does one called Sacred Symbols, which is in reference to the PlayStation's uh, right-hand symbols on the controller, the triangle, the square, the O, and the X, which is really cool. Um, and he has co-host uh, Chris Raygun. Uh Young guy that's a YouTuber who does a lot of comedy and entertainment videos, a la In Chaka's World, which is really funny. <laughs> and the two of them did this game together. Um, and so they are featured in the game. 
It's got a awesome like narrative, but it's a brick breaker. It's an old school brick breaker, which is really awesome. Uh, but it's it's definitely modernized. So there's this awesome kind of beginning bit that kind of explains like the futuristic setting and like what has happened to Earth and. Uh, lo and behold, essentially, uh, NASA and the United States are pretty much outside of a global conflict. We become more isolationist again, very Jeffersonian. And even after peace is brokered, uh, the rest of the world is kind of rebuilding. But the United States and NASA has money to send off these like generational ships into space to Alpha Centauri, our closest neighbor. Very cool, though. Very interesting um, to have a brick breaker with a story, but I really appreciate it. I think it kind of adds like another layer of polish to it. It's a cool story, nonetheless. It's not. It's like concepts that I've read about, I would say, but I haven't um, seen them. I kind of all coalesce into one narrative, especially for a game of this type. Uh, so your live streams will now be held 3.34 due to viewers and the coronavirus. We want to get that out there. Fair enough. So in Chaka's world, my moderator uh, for all my streams, as well as my editor for my YouTube channel. Um, wouldn't that be great if you were in the video game? Uh... He live streams on YouTube. He does a lot of comedy and like entertainment videos. Um, a lot of cross pollination, especially on YouTube. But he usually live streams later in the day, around 5:30. So it looks like he's going to be backing it up and doing it about 3:34, just because of everything going on in the world, which makes sense. I totally get that. I'm doing the same thing. So and I've seen a lot of other people kind of tweak their schedule or. Then, after more than a century of wondering, with the ship after ship hurtling into the unknown, an answer finally materialized. Generation Ship 1, launched in 2191, suddenly appeared in orbit around Mars. Over open channels, it beamed out massive amounts of encrypted data, then it vanished. Bum, bum, bum. For more than a year, scientists from around Earth worked through the data. Embedded in its complex mathematics and alien language was a hidden code pointing towards a previously unnoticed anomaly in orbit around Mercury, the circumference of a small asteroid. I like how they throw up, like, pi and, uh, relativity and... Uh, it was a wormhole, a once hypothetical workaround assumed to circumvent the laws of physics, allowing rapid travel between distant points in space. No one knew where this wormhole might lead, or if it was even safe to traverse. NASA scrambled to concoct small ships, each piloted by a single person. These ships would be charged with jumping through the wormhole to investigate before returning to Mercury. Two ships were chosen. In order to stress that this mission was undertaken in peace, the craft were named Greetings and Salutations. They were, however, equipped with a sophisticated weapon system nicknamed Bouncer. So Greetings and Salutation is something that Colin Moriarty says quite a bit um, when he either begins kind of like a PA or uh, oftentimes this podcast. Greetings and Salutations. And he'll, he'll open that way. So that's kind of a cool nod to their podcast. Okay, so that's kind of like the intro. Uh, obviously, very heavy with like uh, pixel art and like chiptune music, which I personally appreciate. I think is awesome. Uh, we'll just start off with level one in New Game Plus. There's this awesome dialogue too that fleshes out the story. Did you make it through? Yeah, I'm good. Greetings and salutations to Earth. We're on the other side. Over. Static. Earth, we are through. Over. Static. 
figures. Our comms won't make it back into the wormhole. Where are we anyway? I'm trying to get a read on the stars. See if we can triangulate our position. I think you'd have loads of debris on the scanner. Metallic. Could be meteoroids. Could be. Could be. The spectral signatures of the debris seem to be awfully consistent. Carbon, silicon, titanium. The debris structure is quite organized, too. I don't like this. Launch the bouncer and keep a tight formation. Launching the bouncer now. Yeah. It's definitely rooted in a, a lot of old games. So, the first Brick Breaker was actually Breakout in 1976 on the Atari. Um... And it itself was kind of a subgenre of Pong, which had come out like four years earlier, which everybody knows. Um, much, much later, there was an actual game called Brick Breaker that a lot of people know of. Um, but they are essentially just breakout clones. So that's kind of the evolution of the genre. Uh, where it came from, what was the first game, what what console it was on, things like that. And Ariel and I actually just did a uh, 64 Bits of Rage podcast whoops, where we talked about um, console generation. So we started from the very first generation and loosely talked about that because there was almost 900 separate consoles that are classified as first-gen home consoles. And then we went through each one after that and specifically talked about Nintendo's place within the console generation and then just overall. But um, we did talk about Pong and Atari and arcade games and stuff like that. So this is definitely a throwback to it, which is really cool. So I will do a few levels here, but I will also show where it gets really complicated. Because it doesn't just do this for, you know, 40 levels. It adds a lot of stuff to it. To kind of modernize the Brick Breaker. So besides having really well polished, like, chiptunes. Oops. And I missed the times two. Um... They modernized the game mechanics as well. And a narrative. Obviously, a narrative is kind of unique to a Brick Breaker, which is really cool. That one cube in the middle keeps getting me. Oh, thought I could get that and get back. This game kind of has like a brain fuck thing going on, though, later. It's like, what the fuck? Did I just take some mushrooms? What is happening? My brain cannot function like this. But it has to if you want to defeat the game. Boop. Just slowly booping. You can also reflect. I haven't done that yet, but... By doing that kind of direct the ball where you want it to go then it recharges each panel can do it separately too or each paddle I'm a lot better at this than when I played through it so I could do the written review <laughs> not gonna lie it's only because I'm streaming I die at every other game and then this game I'm like fine at like what makes no sense Oh, shit. Then I died. That was a horrible, like... Oh, I was hoping to... Look at that one. Might be able to show you what happens when you run out of time. I just sent it back to the same place. New. No! Oh god, I'm like stuffed up. That was gross. Got the corona! No, I don't. 
Got a cold though from working out in the yard so much on top of all this crazy shit. There we go. Oh, I didn't see that other comment. I'm featured in your gaming stuff. Sorry for asking, but I went to the bathroom and heard my name. Something. To oh, I just said that you're. Oh God, I'm so like stuffed up. That's gross. Um, the editor for the YouTube channel, as well as the the moderator for all AS Inquisitor streams. And I think I talk about. And we feature each other's work on our YouTube channel or something along those lines. Okay, okay, one sec. I, I am super stuffed up. Oh, that was gross. It was like a frog noise. And then phlegm came out of my throat. That was exciting. I think it's like spazzing out. My video's still going. My computer is doing way too much stuff right now. My computer hates me. There's nothing I can do about that. Oh, uh, Colin Moriarty's uh, co-host for Sacred Symbols is Chris Raygun, and he's um, he's a young guy, but he's a YouTuber, and he does a lot of comedy or entertainment YouTube videos, and he has his own comedy podcast as well. I just find it really funny that like Colin does all the video game review stuff, or he used to. But now he just does like video game podcasting and content that way, and obviously made his own game on top of it. And then his partner does comedy and entertainment videos, and like satire, which is what you do. So I was like, that's hilarious. It's like that's that's a similar dynamic. And Chris Reagan's really cool. No, oh, I wanted you to bounce like the right way. That's what it was. They have a good like chemistry though together as far as like co-hosting their podcast and definitely different viewpoints and things that they're interested in, which is cool. Uh, it's actually, I only subscribe to two Patreons and that's one of them. One is a friend of mine. And then another is uh, Colin's Last Stand, or uh, specifically for Sacred Symbols. I, li I listen to pretty much all their stuff since I I don't pay much for it. It's a dollar a month, so but if I can support and have more content, why not? I like how I shot like all those blocks in the middle. Oh. Yeah, damn it. Come on, buddy. Come on. I got three I got three blocks. Up oh, two. Oh, and then I deflected it the wrong way. Come on. Like, I'm, like, super, like, concentrating now on these last two blocks. There we go. Cool. 
good times. Okay, so that's kind of the gist of the game, like how it plays. Those are the most basic levels. Um, obviously, you're kind of score chasing to get like the best rank, which is S ranks, and they give you kind of a score breakdown at the end of each level. Um, we are going to check out they have boss levels in this game which is really cool so every 10 levels you get a boss which is pretty badass to include in a brick breaker and they're really like really well designed like they look really cool and they fit into the aesthetic of the game Nope. Oh, and Ariel came up with a rating system for um, our podcast or our company. So if when we review games again, uh, it'll be out of bear paws. Five bear paws. <coughs> so we gave Twin Breakers a four and a half bear paws out of five. It only got shorted a half bear paw. Because even though I find games like this to be incredibly nostalgic and a great throwback to arcade and original home uh, console gaming, I don't think younger generations are going to feel that way and be as enamored with it. So I think accessibility-wise, it's not as accessible as it could be. However, I wouldn't change personally anything about it. I think it's a great game, and it's perfect in my book, as far as for what it is. But, I do have difficulties giving out perfect scores. I have some things that I would give a perfect score, but... I do find them to be a little bit more universal than not. Get the boss! Get the boss! Oh, missed one ball. Missing balls! You know, I don't need anybody on my stream making fun of my, my testicle issues. I find that unfair. It's a poor characterization. I'm not defined solely by my testicles. Oh, fuck. Maybe I am. I got like one brick left. I get the boss though. There we go, we got him. So the boss has a little like HP meter up top. Then each each hit with the the ball or the pong uh, causes like one thing of damage. But I can't fucking get it over there. Oh, then I hit the one block on the entire screen. I mean, I guess it was, like, bound to happen. I don't think I got rid of all the bricks when I did this the first time. Oh, could have got a swipe in. I could have just avoided the his attack. Yeah, we got him! Woo! I want a pair of balls and 18 inches. What? This game is super old school. That's what I love about it. Okay, so... There's a boss round, which is pretty legit. Um, oh, I'll show you... There's These levels are crazy, and they, these are the ones that like broke my brain. I think it's this group. So there's Colin. That was close. That it was. There's Chris. Seems safe for now. What were you saying earlier? Well, Salutations computers have been analyzing all of this debris, and... And either it's a me all a major coincidence, or these are definitely pieces of NASA's lost generation ships. You mean... I mean, whatever intercepted them also poured them into hundreds of pieces and kept them suspended in space. But why would they lead us right to them? I 
don't know. And how did Generation Ship 1 survive? I'm working on that. I still can't get any communiques through the wormhole. Me neither. We're still on our own then. I say we keep cruising and think about what's going on here. I agree. Things are getting hectic. Maybe we should deploy the duplication data packet. Okay, th this is coming up. This is my favorite line in the whole game. I think that's a good idea. Salutations, launch the hologram. Greetings, do the same. This should make things a little easier. This is the line I'm talking about. Let's hope. What they do is, is they give you four panels that you control with one controller. So, left and right on the left analog stick does the bottom. Left and right on the right analog stick does the bottom. Also with that though, up and down does the other paddle. And up and down on the other side does this paddle. Or you can use the face buttons. You can use the face buttons as well, which I used for a little bit because it was easier. Like I already missed one because I was looking at something else. This shit broke my brain. Because they're all independent of one another, but they're attached to the same thing. Like, I almost missed that one. Like, I'm surprised I got that. That was a good bounce, though. That, that really actually helped me. It broke my brain, yo. <clears throat> no! See, and then the ball go, of course, gets faster because it's a brick breaker. God damn it. You can't move which paddle the ball moves to, though. Which is kind of cool. There's, I didn't realize how many sexual indianos there was with a brick breaker. That's interesting. That's something I, I either learned about myself today or I learned about brick breakers. Either or. Useful information. Fuckity fuck. Get it? Oh, I still gotta hit it again, though. Oh, perfect. Yay, we did stuff. That's what I mean. It blows your mind. I had uh, Ariel try out this level, where you, and she was like, what the fuck? How do you do this? I was like, yeah. I was like, I was finishing the game for review, and it fucking just dick to me hard. I was like, what is happening? Where am I? Um, okay, let's show off some of the different modes that it has. So besides the 40 levels that progressively get harder and change up the gameplay, as well as the intermix boss, along with the story, you get all these additional modes. Um, so there's marathon mode. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, You just run straight through uh, the levels without getting any more uh, health in between. Which I did way better than I thought. Um, so we hit level two. Yeah, max health? I don't think I've ever got max health. There's a trophy for that, I thought. Maybe not. Oh, it was like max health ten times or something like that is what it is. Oh, then I lost it. Shoot these blocks. Get these out of here. Ah, right in between. That's fantastic. I gotta say, I'm doing way better than when the other morning when I was finishing this up for review. I was like, even some of these basic levels, I was like, nope. Not today. My brain is not gonna function for a brick breaker. It's so slow. There we go, got a little, little speed. 
If I could only, like... Yeah! I can't believe that worked. Looks and sounds, but it is crazy hard. Max health again! Gotta keep up on that. Get that trophy in no time. Yeah, it took me about three, three and a half hours to complete the whole game. Um, at most. And then I would estimate that it would take seven to maybe nine if you're not great at Brick Breakers to get a platinum trophy for it, which is kind of cool. And you can get a platinum on the Vita and the PS4, like independently of one another. So two platinums for some pretty addictive gameplay, which is cool. Trophy, trophy whores unite. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm doing way better than I did the other day. I'm not gonna lie. Thank God I didn't record any of that footage. Yeah, that was cray cray, yo. I couldn't even like keep track for the, like that fast. And if I got one of the like negative items that you know like shrunk your paddle or something like, I was like toast. I was like I couldn't recover from it. Oh, and then I missed it, and I got the bad one. All in one shot. At least I had a good, like, toss for it. Oh, wow, that was a blatant miss. No, I only got one. It made me sad. It made me so sad. My inner child is crying. No! I biffed up the... Oh, oh! Oh! I always say when there's like one brick. And you just can't get it. You're just like pretty much waiting for the luck of the draw. Which I did. I did it all by myself. That really helps a lot when you get the, like, weighted one. Just tears through shit. Oh, no, we're back to normal, though. No! Oh, God, that was close. Oh, then I fucked it up. Oh, really fucked it up. Ah, oh, I wanted that power up, but I was gonna miss it. That's good. Yeah, I got another trophy. I really, I'm gonna get a platinum on this for sure. That's my next task. Fuck Mad Max. No, I'll go back and get a platinum for Mad Max, but I'm doing this one first. Okay, that's marathon mode. Pretty basic. Um, really nothing to kind of explain there. Like, you just marathon through all the levels with uh, just your set health. Uh, Pong mode! Did I hit Pong mode? Yep, okay. So this one, the AI tries to block you as if you're playing against somebody in Pong. So there's a goal in the back. And they can hit goals on you. Or you can uh, hopefully score a goal on them like that. 
again, pretty self-explanatory. Kind of a cool mode, though. I like how it switches it up, adds, you know, the bosses from the story. Um, with brick, with like a brick breaker progenitor, you know, Pong. In a very kind of unique way. If it's the tone of the game, if it's the story of the game, and... Uh, kind of adds to the overall package of what you can do. So if you want a more traditional experience, you can do this. Which I actually usually don't play like alternate modes in games, but I tried all of these out yesterday and I enjoyed pretty much every one of them for what it was. Like, they really did do a good job of just kind of different flavor um no pause that uh yesterday in live stream some troll was there said to get a life to quit youtube i'm bad at this scene it didn't know how to put blocker ban the guy was so mad bro very frustrated when i got my stream i banned it. oh that sucks i wish i had been there i would have banned that asshole in two seconds Okay, yep. That's Pong. <laughs> I'm not gonna fuck around with the, the double paddles. Uh, random mode. Random mode's kind of trippy because it just does random blocks. So, sometimes they can be fairly easy. Other times, like this, not so much. Oh, I wasn't even paying attention. There is another paddle that I can use. What are the odds? Shrink. Fuck! I'll retry random mode. Yeah, see, now it's a different one. That was kind of a funny one, though. Tear through it! Yeah! That was, like, super quick. That was a good one. Let's see if my video actually rendered. My computer kind of quieted down. Or it just bricked it. It's just like, fuck it. And it's just perpetually said nine minutes. And then my stream is like, oh, share successful! Yay! That's so surprising. It honestly is. I'm not gonna lie. But it makes me happy nonetheless. Now I gotta do the audio version of it. Which is way quicker, because it's just audio. I like how I'm like producing a podcast as we stream. It's kind of a special one, though, anyways. I'm not going to go terribly long today, because I have some other things to work on for Twin Breaker. But I do want to show it off, since I have a chance to. Audio only. Bam, 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 bam. We're rolling. Yeah, it comes out tomorrow. Um, and it is $10. And you can get it for the PS4 or the Vita. <laughs> I would recommend... Because like in your situation, I don't think you have either or. I would recommend getting a Vita. Um, they're not terribly expensive. And I think you would really enjoy the games on the Vita, and this game plays better on the Vita, in my opinion. Uh, I have an easier time with it, because it's closer to your face, and then you have two joysticks on the Vita, um, and it was just a little e better to handle, and Colin Moriarty is a big proponent of the PlayStation Vita, like, called Vita, I Vita Island, which I am, I have been a resident of Vita Island for a long time. Um, okay, so we tried a random mode. Let's go to shooter mode. This one's kind of cool. So one of the power-ups you could get is the ability for your 
paddle to shoot. This one, it just kind of drops bricks on you, almost, uh, almost a la like Space Invaders. And you gotta make sure that they they don't hit the bottom. It's pretty basic. They get more and more frequent though. Take more and more shots. They'll flip over on their side to make it more difficult to shoot. I actually like this one. I find this mode to be super cathartic. It's just like, you know what? I want to kill 10 minutes. Half hour. You could just have fun racking up a score. I think a lot of games nowadays try so hard that they lose the game amongst their vision. And so the game is not as fun as it could be. I, one of the reasons I really enjoy this game is because it's just fun. It's not... It knows what it is. And it does a good job of just being entertaining. And it doesn't ask any, like, more or less of you. It just, you know, burn some time. Have some fun. Play an old school arcade game. And I think that's really cool. Uh, that's shooter mode. Shooter mode's pretty cool. Like I said, I really enjoy that one. Then they have catcher mode. And all you gotta do is catch stuff. They fall, like, a little bit faster. And then the screen scrolls in this one, which really kind of fucks with me, too. It's like some mario S stuff right here. Some of them are static and unmoving. Un Wave two. Oh, I didn't know you could get the power-ups. I don't think I made it this far last time, to be honest. That'd be helpful. I don't think I missed one yet. <laughs> oh, there. No, I missed one there. Got the bugs! Playing also uh, Animal Crossing in my spare time. I've never played Animal Crossing before. Uh, it's one of Ariel's favorite, like, franchises, though. And we'll be covering it in 64 Bits of Rage this coming week, but she always says, catching them bugs and paying them rent. I feel like that's what I'm doing now. Got the bugs. There's so many bugs. I'm doing a lot better on this one, too, than when I did the very first time. Oh, I missed that one. That was sad. I think you get... Oh! Got another trophy. I think I'm racking up trophies on my stream. Show you how, like, quick they are to obtain. It's not that bad at all. But also challenging in their own right. <coughs> Woo. Stick around up. Oh, finally died. So that's catcher mode. Yeah, I think you'd really like enjoy this one. Uh, and then there's boss rush mode, which is exactly how it sounds. Uh, you just go through all the bosses, which is cool too. Very old school mode in a game, which you don't get very often anymore. Imagine a boss rush mode on. Uh, like Dark Souls or Bloodborne or Sekiro or something along those lines. That would be cool. People would eat that shit up, too. Yeah, get him! Get him! I'm surprised I kept even just one of the the pongs like going in the air. No, yeah, I missed him. Oh, 
I like how I snuck, how I snuck in another shot, though. Two fireballs! Yeah, we did it! Yeah, that's fine. I'm Like I said, I'm not going to go very long today since it's kind of my first day back. Um, and I have some more Twin Breaker stuff to work on. Grrr. Why are we growling? Okay, um, I am going to kind of wrap up. It's going to be a short stream anyways. Uh, let's get the, the full screen mode kind of going here. Okay, there we go. So, Twin Breaker is definitely a Brick Breaker, as you saw. Um, for $10, amazing deal. Uh, it's got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six modes. Seven if you count the uh, story and just the level select. Uh, for 10 bucks, all very different and unique. Um, it's got a great plot. Awesome audio with uh, classic kind of chiptune inspired music, which I love. Uh, great pixel art, so awesome like aesthetic on top of it. Um, and it simultaneously does a great job of harkening back to old school games. Uh, you know, Asteroids, Space Invaders, Pac-Man, like, you know, maybe not the same genre, but definitely... Uh, kind of clustered together as far as like release, like very defining games. Um, and then it modernizes it on top of it, which is really cool. It's a really hard thing to kind of blend together to be able to take a really old subgenre of Pong and then make it for 2020 and then interweave just kind of new elements into it, have it at that ridiculous price point. And you're kind of you're appeasing a lot of different groups, except for I would say really young gamers who might not fancy something like this. But otherwise, you're getting like trophy hunters. You're getting people who like to play on handhelds with the Vita. You're getting console gamers. Um, you're getting throwbacks to like arcades and original home consoles. Um, you know, if you grew up in the '90s, like uh, Jacob and I did, and my wife even. Like, you played Nintendo. You know, you were used to chiptunes because you had a Sega Genesis or a Super Nintendo or an NES or, you know, something along those lines. And then that kind of gave birth to um, early 3D console gaming, like with the PlayStation 1 and the Dreamcast and the N64. Well, this comes from that kind of older era. And you can tell that it was made with love and passion and in my opinion they did a really good job of representing themselves and i think the best way i put it yesterday when ariel and i were recording our podcast for this um was Colin moriarty obviously made this for him and fans not just himself or just fans and you can see a bit of himself in it which is really cool uh, I think a lot of modern developers stray too far and they're not passionate about what they're working on and you can kind of see that in the finished project. Whether it's a small indie game or a AAA game, it just doesn't hold up and it doesn't do very well, at least critically, maybe sales-wise, just because of the, the IP name attached to it. <clears throat> but you can see it, it lacks heart, I guess, or soul. This has a lot of character. Um... But it's also made for those that, like Jacob and I again, that love old games, that love retro games, that love arcades, that love, you know, that original kind of swath of console gaming. And so that's why, personally, I give this five bear paws out of five bear paws. Um, the official score for AS Inquisitor is a four and a half out of five. And that's only because of the accessibility issue that I brought up. I don't think younger generations are going to care for it unfortunately unless you're a fan of colin and moriarty or chris reagan i don't think you would be interested in a brick breaker oh i mean yeah but you grew up in the 90s that's what i said i wasn't born in the 90s either you also weren't five in the 80s though
<laughs> or 15 or whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean. Your formative years were in the 90s. That's what makes you a millennial, which you fucking hate, but I loved saying it to you. That cracks me up. Because you would have been like 10 in the 90s. I would have been like 10 in the 90s. That's the point. You're not playing video games when you're 18 months old. Get out of here with that nonsense. That's what I say to that. Get out of here. Own it. Own the fact that you're a millennial and that you were a kid throughout the 90s. Own it. Change it. Change the perception. Plus, millennials are old now. I get called old all the fucking time. It's great. Millennials are in their 30s. It's fantastic. Older millennials are in their 30s. It's fantastic. Now we get to bitch about Gen Zers. I could do a whole podcast about this or a whole Twitch stream about generational breakdowns. and I could be curmudgeonly to younger generations than myself. My, although I have a toddler at home that's a Gen Alpha. Like he's, he's even younger than Gen Zers, which is crazy. I'm a millennial with a Gen Alpha. What does that even fucking mean anymore? Like, what are they like? I don't know. They're two. Anyways. For people born in the 80s and have lived through the 90s and older, I think you'll really like uh, Twin Breaker. It's totally up your alley. Like, it just does a great job of harking back to a kind of a golden era in gaming. So, I urge you guys to check it out. Uh, it's AS Inquisitor Indoors. It's only 10 bucks. It comes out tomorrow which is uh, March 24th of 2020. Today is the 23rd. The embargo just lifted, so I can talk about it now. Um, I know you're playing around. That's why I went on my rant, okay, man? Let me go on my rant, Jacob. <laughs> you, you never let me rant. You always try to curtail me. Uh, uh, it's like um, Sideshow Bob from The Simpsons. Ugh. Ugh. Um, yeah, but that's my recommendation. That's Twin Breaker. Uh, I will be producing this video for YouTube today. Um, so if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, check out Twin Breaker. If you're watching this on Twitch, check out Twin Breaker. Uh, if you read my written review, check out Twin Breaker. And you guessed it, if you listen to the podcast, check out Twin Breaker. That's all I got. Um... What do I got going on? So today I will be submitting my review, my written review. Um, getting the podcast, this video kind of polished up for YouTube. And then if I have time, I might come back and do a YouTube live stream of Resident Evil 3, the demo. It's on the docket and I want to get to that as soon as possible. I have some very definite opinions about it. So I'm excited to do that for probably a different reason than people think. And then... What else do I got going on? I'm trying to think. I'm going to get my editor hooked up with some videos today, so he has some work to do. Saturdays is going to be his day on the AS Inquisitor channel, so... Um... As soon as he starts editing videos and has them ready to post, then we'll be releasing... Um... Jacob's edits of past streams, AS Inquisitor streams, on Saturdays on the AS Inquisitor channel. We just gotta work out logistics. That's the only thing holding us back. Is YouTube is, has been a little weird with like emails and making people an editor and stuff like that. So a co live stream. Oh God, where you just rant back and forth. You could easily like. That's a, that's a funny idea. That'd be good for your channel just because it's more comedy. But you could totally set me up. We could talk about it ahead of time. But you could set me up with something where I just like lose my shit. And you like pretend to egg me on. And I just I like I, I it seems like I'm getting really flustered and angry. But obviously I'm not. It's just for comedy's sake. Right, I can be like, we grew up in the 90s. And you'd be like, I was born in the 80s. I was like, no, I know, but you weren't a kid. Like, and you can, we can just keep doing that. That'd be really funny. I think it'd be dope. Just do like a split screen live session or something. You might have to record that ahead of time, though. Separately, because of lag. That's the only thing I can think of. 
We might lag differently because we're in different parts of the country and have different internet service. I don't know how that would work. I don't know. I'll look into it. Or you can. Or both of us. I don't care. Um, yeah, anyways. That's what I got going on. Uh, for you guys that didn't catch it, uh, my name's Anthony Schultz. Uh, this is AS Inquisitor, or ASI for short. Uh, we got two weekly podcasts, Rage Quit and 64 Bits of Rage. Uh, they come out Wednesdays and Fridays, respectively. One's about PlayStation and generalized video gaming. The other is about Nintendo. Uh, I also have a long format monthly podcast called FGG, fucking great games. Uh, it's more nostalgic, pop culture kind of oriented. Comes out once a month. It's usually about three hours long. The newest episode of that is about to drop, and it's all about the Yeast series. I had to solo that one. I didn't have my co-host John, but uh, I did it. I went like almost two hours, so hopefully it's not dry. But I went through every single Yeast game, talked about them. That was kind of cool. Um, and then, yeah, we post a ton of stuff on YouTube. Uh, unboxings, Let's Plays. Uh, the There's a special edition of the podcast that goes on YouTube. Uh, my editor, Jacob's going to hopefully be cracking into some stuff. Where we can get him set up today after he sleeps. And then his stuff will release every Saturday. And then I do two Let's Talks every week on YouTube. They're just a few minutes, and it's me ranting about stuff. Uh, whether it's the channel or stuff at large. I think I ranted about people hoarding. Like, I think that was the last one, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, and then I stream on Twitch five days a week. So I'm flipping back, and I'm doing it... Um, same days, but it'll be in the mornings instead of the evenings. So, that's what we got. We will talk later. We always do. And we always do. Um, and then I will be back tomorrow to stream. I'm going to be doing some Doom Eternal. So, we're going to stream four hours from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Roughly 6. I'll probably be a little late because I wake up at like 5.30. Um, of Doom Eternal, which is fucking badass and awesome. And you should check that out, too. But anyways, have a good rest of the day, guys. Uh, be safe out there if you're watching this. Uh, use your head. Use your noggin. And be respectful and nice to people. And try your best to take care of your friends and your family and your loved ones. Uh, even if you can't go to them physically because of everything going on. Um, reach out. Talk to that grandma you haven't talked to in a long time. Um, you might regret not doing something like that. Uh, talk to that old high school friend that you haven't talked to in, you know, 15 years. Um, whoever it may be, or maybe you've fallen out of touch with them, just for sanity's sake, for mental health as well as personal health, um, do that. And then while you're at it, like everybody already knows now, practice social distancing. If your state's not already locked down, like Jacob's, uh, be hygienic. Wash your hands, use sanitizer, be careful. If you are out and about, if you're in a state where you can, um, you know, go to the grocery store, go get gas or whatever, do it as infrequently as possible. And then if you buy something, make sure you leave stuff for other people. Don't, don't wipe out a whole shelf so that the family behind you can't get milk for their kid or diapers for their kid, like, or dog food for their dogs. Like, other people have pets and kids. So, be mindful. So, that's kind of what it boils down. Be cautious. Use your noggin. Be mindful. Be respectful. Be kind. And always remember, follow the bear. I do. I look a lot like Gandalf. It's great. I gave, like, a public service announcement via ASquisitor, and I looked like I just came out of the Shire. Like, I, if, if a hobbit ran behind me, I don't think you would be surprised, and I don't think I would be surprised. Also, I have, like, I wear, also, this is very Gandalf-y, like, shit ton of rings. I, I, they all mean something, so that's why I wear them. Uh, I always have, like, a bracelet on, and then I got the crazy hair. I just need a cloak at this point, and a staff. I, I should be Gandalf for Halloween, because I could dye my hair gray. It's already going gray anyways. I'll consider it. And don't have sex.
Uh, no. <laughs> Did you see Toothless Beardo's um, graphic on Twitter where it was the Corona Sutra? So your face could be always 1.5 meters away from your partner. Which was fantastic. So it was like, Missionary was out, but Doggy Style was in. It was like stuff like that. If you haven't checked check that out check out our other moderator and good friend of the channel uh toothless beardo he's on twitch youtube and twitter but he and instagram and he's super fucking funny but he's been posting like corona jokes which obviously take it seriously but it's kind of nice to have some levity okay well i'm signing off uh have a good rest of the day guys uh i'm gonna practice what i preach uh, and work on some Twin Breaker stuff. So, I hope you liked the episode. Uh, I'm going to be more diligent about doing it in the mornings. And it'll go more back to normal as far as AS Inquisitor is concerned. But, until tomorrow, peace out, homies. Now I gotta click a button.